Thanks, Chad. Two questions. You touched on the issue of nominations and confirmations. Mm -hmm. Given the statements of Senator Manchin, Senator Collins, Senator Romney, what do you see as near Tandon's path to become director of OMB? And also, what does it mean for the Biden agenda if this process keeps on being delayed and grown now? The process of confirmations? Yeah. Well, I, I, let me start with that. I would say that um, we experienced some uh, intransigence uh, during the during the transition, uh, some delays in processes that had previously worked at a more rapid pace. Our view is that we've hopefully moved past that. We've seen a number of our uh, nominees uh, move forward uh, over the past couple of weeks pretty quickly with large bipartisan votes, and we certainly welcome that. Uh, but we are eager to have our team in place. This week has a number of important hearings. There are a number of important votes this week. We would love to end the week with a Secretary of Education in place as an example, and certainly others as we uh, as we look to have the full team uh, and hopefully a full cabinet meeting at some point in the near future. As it relates to Neera Tandon, let me just say that the President nominated her because he believes she'd be a stellar OMB director. She's tested. She's a leading policy expert. She's led a think tank uh, in this in Washington that has done a great deal of work on policy issues, but has done a great deal of bipartisan work as well. She's won widespread support and endorsements, ranging from labor unions to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and she's uh, rolled up her sleeves and done the work. She's met with more, to, more than 35 senators, Democrats and Republicans herself. Uh, this is a process. Confirmations, getting individuals confirmed is. She has uh, two committee votes this week, uh, and we're working toward that, and we'll continue to work in supporting her nomination. So you still see a cap to 50 votes or more? We do. One last time, mm -hmm. I want to follow up on what Josh asked you about Neera uh, Camden. You, you said that the White House still sees a pathway. Without Senator Manchin, what is it? Well, again, I think you know she needs the majority of votes in order to get through and be confirmed as the OMB director, and that's what we're working toward. Go ahead, Ed. In that vein, beyond your attendance, is the White House certain that all other cabinet nominees have the support of all members of the Democratic Party? Uh, well, I don't have a whip count for you here, but we are certainly, we take nothing for granted. And part of our effort is not just reaching out to Republicans, which we certainly are doing, and all of our nominees uh, do as well, but also ensuring that Democrats who have questions, who have any concerns, have their questions answered too. And we take nothing for granted in uh, pushing forward with our nominees. Okay. Um, in opposing your attendance, Republicans and at least one Democrat have said they expected more from the President's nominees in the vein of uniting a divided country. What's your response to that specific criticism that they have leveled, that she spent years stoking that divide on the air and online? Well, here's what I can convey in, uh, about her work as, uh, as uh, somebody who ran CAP, uh, the Center for American Progress. Uh, she worked with partners across the ideolo ideological spectrum to develop consensus solutions to addressing the federal tax code, uh, to improving access to high-quality educational opportunities. They partnered with AEI in that effort. She worked with, uh, led the effort to work with um, Freedom Works uh, and others on the R Street Institute on uh, making progress on criminal justice uh, reform. And again, she met with 35 members of the Senate, uh, including Republicans. So she is willing and eager to meet with people who agree with her, of course, but also people who disagree with her. And what she brings to the table is not only decades of policy experience, but um, an expertise and leadership, again, of a, a major think tank in this uh, city, but also somebody who has lived experience. You know, she grew up as the daughter of a, a single mother, somebody who benefited from many of the programs that she would be tasked with determining the, the recommendations on funding for. So uh, she has a record of working with members of both parties or views from both parties, uh, and uh, I, we have no doubt she would do that as budget director. Uh, on the COVID bill, um, build on what Caitlin was saying. I mean, the president, uh, he said that there was going to be a new tone in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Manchin, Collins do not feel that this is a new tone. So how does the president kind of square that, saying that he does want a new tone? We are going to have a new language, new no respect for everyone, and this, you know, fire on the spot kind of policy, he has said. Have you asked Pre Senator Manchin and Senator Collins about whether they think uh, President Biden has a new tone? Well, I mean, I think Senator Manchin and Senator Collins have said that they, they have concerns about uh, about her tweets and her language. And, and we, we disagree on whether she is the right choice for OMB, to lead the OMB. Uh, but 
that is a bit of an overstatement to suggest that anyone, and you should ask them, and unless you've had interviews with them, then please speak up and convey that to us. But uh, they they both have had regular conversations with President Biden. Uh, we, we look forward, let me finish, we look forward to working with them on a range of priorities and issues, uh, whether it's the American Rescue Plan, whether it is uh, immigration, uh, addressing the outdated uh, immigration system, whether it is uh, foreign policy issues, and he'll continue to engage and have discussions with a range of senators, including people where he has disagreements. And I think that's fair, but I think the question is, does the pre is the president okay with the language and rhetoric that Neera Tandem has used in direction of other members of Congress, including some Democrats and especially Republicans. I think the fact that the president nominated her to lead the budget to be uh, running OMB reflects uh, his view that she's the right person to be in his cabinet, to uh, lead uh, the, be overseeing the budget, uh, and that her qualifications, uh, her history of uh, working across the aisle with people from different groups uh, who have different points of view is a reflection of how she would uh, do that role. One more on the other and then I'll sure. move on to a different topic. Um, you said she's only met with 35 senators, is that correct? Is there oh. Oh, over at least 35, had over 35 meetings. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason she's not met with more? Has any GOP senator refused to meet with her? I, I don't think we're going to speak to, as we wouldn't in any case, um, who she's met to or give you get, get met with or give you a list of to protect the privacy of senators. But uh, 35 meetings with Republican and Democratic senators is actually quite a significant number of, of meetings in the process. Wait, but okay, point taken. But if you look at how controversial her nomination is, and in the context of your broader legislative agenda and other legislative items that will face an uphill battle in Congress, do you risk? Uh, do you risk political capital by forging ahead with this, or do you see it completely unrelated? I, look, I think uh, the president nominated Neera Tandon because she, he felt she was the right person to lead the budget office um, because she has uh, decades of experience, uh, because she would bring fresh perspective to the job, uh, because uh, she has a record of working with uh, people from a range of organizations of different viewpoints. Uh, but, uh, you know, and we're going to, we, we remain committed to moving that process forward to a confirmation. But there are a range, even areas where we disagree. We may di have disagreement, of course, with Senator Manchin or Senator Collins about whether she's the right person to lead, but we are still going to work with them on a range of other issues uh, that are of mutual interest um, and of interest to the American people. And that includes the rescue plan, that includes uh, you know, many components of the president's agenda moving forward. Go ahead.